Space is Sims, and we are back with more Pio Fiore, and we are just continuing Gilbert's route where we left off. I guess this is where we left off. It's been a few days since I recorded, because, you know, I don't record over the weekends. Um, so, sure. <laughs> anyway. By the time- Oh, right, he was playing with his guns, wasn't he? Right, that's what was happening. Okay, sure. By the time he was done checking everything, it was mid-afternoon. We felt the warm rays of the sun on our skin as we walked to the church. Roy, right. now I remember. I'm going in to pray. What about you? I... Huh. Where am I? I want to say hi to Sister Sophia. I was like, where am I in the guide? Okay. Maybe I'll go say hi to Sister Sophia. He may not be able to concentrate on his prayers if I'm by his side. I didn't want to disturb him, so I decided to go somewhere else. I see. Thanks. Gil smiled at me gently before heading inside. Maybe he knew what I was thinking. I felt a little embarrassed, but I decided to go look for Sister Sophia. Space, I'm so glad to see you doing well. I found Sister Sophia in the dining hall. It's been a long time since we had to do Sister Sophia's voice. Jesus. As soon as she saw me, I saw a look of relief come across her face. I'm sorry I couldn't contact you until now. I didn't mean to worry you, Sister Sophia. It's all right. I received word from the Visconti, and Marco came to visit and explained to me as well. But once you're allowed to return, you can come back any time, okay? Sister Sophia didn't ask for the details and gave me a warm smile. She doesn't ask for the details because bitch knows, and we know that she knows by now. This is your home after all. Thank you, Sister Sophia. Not for long. I'm going to go live with guilt forever. Seeing her again after such a long time, I felt deeply relieved. Have you come alone today? No, I'm with Gil. He's praying in the church. Sister Sophia? Listen to me, Space. Sister Sophia softly took my hand, but the tone of her voice was strange. I want to tell you something. No, I must tell you something. She looked serious, so I fell silent and nodded. You must never, ever, ever fall in love with Gilbert. I'm just kidding. She took me to a place where no one would hear us. You know that the church has a close relationship to the Fell Zone, don't you? Yes, the Fell Zone have always donated large sums of money to the church. Yes, on the surface, that is our relationship. But there's another reason. You mean the whole key maiden thing? And she's like, you know? Well, there is? Okay, why are we acting like we haven't, we've been told this already? You already know, right? The story of the church's beginnings. The saint who received the divine message to build the church of Boulogne was an ancestor of the Fal's own family. We're acting surprised, but didn't, wasn't that part of what we learned? In the casino meeting? Have we... Am I crazy? She knows this. Dante told us as much. And I feel like it's not just because we... I already... I already know. I feel like it's because she was already told this earlier in this exact route. But uh, maybe I'm crazy. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm not. I'm pretty sure she's just acting like an idiot, but... Okay. Me, I wasn't looking at the screen. Me, I'm just like looking off everywhere except for reading this. Okay, never mind. Just... You know what? Forget it. I'm just so used to games making the MCs complete and utter fucking idiots that when they do this and she's acting shocked, it's like, but you know, oh, never mind. No, she knows this. Okay. I know I should have more faith in our Atome, M Atome MCs, right? But sometimes I just get stuck on the, they make them idiots. And when they're being intelligent like her, I miss, I just, I'm sorry. It's just, <laughs> it's my own bias. Okay. Anyway, that was the information we heard from Dante when we visited the Fell Zone before. I thought it was at the casino. But anyway, I knew we knew it. Sister Sophia knew it as well. Oh, okay, that's why you're acting shocked. I figured you would have made that assumption. Well, okay, I guess. Not only the surrounding land, but the church itself belongs to the Fell Zone. The church and the Fell Zone have been connected since the beginning, even now. Sister Sophia? I asked what I had I asked what I had a hunch about. Have you heard of the Key Maiden? Yes. I heard that you've already been notified of your fate. From the Fel Zone? 
Sister Sophia remained quiet, and she clearly shook her head. Sophia, how long have you known that I'm the key maiden? Ever since you arrived at this church. The Falzone informed me. They has to keep you here with us so we could protect you. Kind of did a lousy job of that. I'm just saying, up until recently, you were fine. But recently, it's gone downhill. Sophia looked at me as I... As I... Oh, Sophia looked at me as I was at a loss for words. She slowly continued. I can read, I swear. You'd never know. However, I have never once treated you any differently from the other children just because you were the key maiden. I cherish not only you, cherish not only you but everyone else as well. You're all children to me. Sister Sophia, I felt relieved to hear her gentle words and the tension inside me relaxed. What if Sophia's kindness was only because I was the key maiden? I felt horrible for even wondering that and bit my lip. I heard that the position of the key maiden is very dangerous. You've carried a special fate since before you were even born. The mark you have on your chest is proof that you're the key maiden. This mark? My hand instinctively came up to my chest. I was always worried that you'd become involved in an accident or an incident someday. And I'm still very worried about you. I pray that you can live a peaceful life. Please don't forget that both the Falzone and I worry about you from the bottom of our hearts. Right. She's like, right, okay. No. I should get going soon. I couldn't let Gil wait too long. I said my goodbyes to Sister Sophia and left the room. She's like, yeah, okay, bye. <laughs> Awkward. Oh. Oh, that's right. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> we left the church and arrived at Valeno. This was where the Lao Shu's base stood. The Lao Shu music is so, like, dark and sultry. But, like, everything, you're like, oh, it's just so mysterious and, like, slightly dark and raw. <laughs> like, <laughs> everything else is, like, happy peppy. And this is, like, there is, like, a sensual darkness to this. I don't know if it's... Well... Ying! You have a visitor! We'll be at Lent. Oh, yeah, because usually it does the... Okay, yeah. It's Redford and the Viscont... It's Redford from the Visconti and a girl. The two children seemed to be twins, and they guided us to a big room that looked to be a dining hall. Thank you. Um... I stopped, realizing I didn't know their names yet. They seemed to understand and told me their names. I'm Lon. Lon. Faye. Faye. <laughs> Three hours later. They hold those title cards on them a way long. I see. Thank you, Lon. Faye. I thank them, and they both flash me their innocent smiles. Atop the round table were a Chinese tea set and lots of dishes I've never seen. Yo, Yang. Sorry for dropping in like this. <laughs> like Yang right now, just the look on his face, you know he's just like <sighs> it's just Yang is me at all times. Hey, let's do this! <sighs> do I have to? <laughs> Yang is a mood. <laughs> as soon as Yang saw us, he gave a big sigh that made it clear he didn't want us here. Literally me at life. <sighs> Just don't want to exist today. Perhaps because we visited unannounced, he looked at us if we, as if he were annoyed. Next to Yang was a man I'd never met before. When he saw Gil, he gulped in surprise. It must have come as a shock to see Gil, the Visconti boss, visiting Yang here. That said, since we've come all the way to Valeno, serve us some tea. Gil spoke ever so lightly as he swiftly sat down on one of the chairs. I like it. Gil just... Gil is that person. He's just like, hey, what's up? I'm here to visit. Give me some tea. And you're like... Ugh, I just want to be alone. <laughs> I feel Yang so hard. Look, I love Gil, but like... He's got a big personality. And he's like very... He's very hyperactive, I feel like. He's just always on. And like, Yang is more like, I'm just going to lounge here and do nothing. Yang is more my speed, is all I'm saying. Like, 
Oh, that looks delicious. I'm going to help myself to one. Gil reached out to a big, white, fluffy thing and took a bite of it. Oh, this is good. Tastes different from the dishes I know. All the things they sell in Valena are pretty good. Republic of China is a great country. But <laughs> Yang's like, oh, already I'm exhausted. And don't touch my food. Don't you think there's poison in it? If you're asking me, that must mean there isn't. Besides, you didn't know I was visiting, so there's no way you could have poisoned it. Yang's like, damn it, you're smart. You act stupid, but you're so fucking smart. <laughs> How about you, Space? You should help yourself, too. Like, <laughs> he's that person. That, like, he's so smart, but he's acting. You're like, you're acting like that asshole. You're like, hey, just help yourself. Just do this, whatever. And you're like, I hate you, but I love you so much. I love him, but like, if he were the coming into my house, I'd be like, you exhaust me. I need you to leave. Gil spoke with a smile. Take a bite, because he told us to. Then, would you mind if I had one too? We at least ask. I don't care. Do as you please. Yang looked like he had the venom taken out of him and just sighed. He's <laughs> too exhausted. <sighs> I love it. They say if you want to understand someone from another culture, you should share a meal with them. Gil laughed and took another bite of his food. I chose the same thing that Gil did and mustered up the courage to take a bite. It's delicious! The thick bun had a slightly had a slight sweet taste to it, and inside was filled with salted meat and vegetables. I couldn't help but praise the food, and the twins nearby exclaimed with delight. Our dim sum is the best in the whole world! It's good to see you have good taste! Eat more! Eat more! I'll bring you some more, okay? Uh, um... Is everything all right? <laughs> I love Yang's face. <laughs> I just... You know, I mean, I love Yang. Don't get me wrong. But he does... Okay, like, when he dies in all the other routes, it's like he kind of deserves it. He's technically the villain. I mean, he's a villain. But, like, you know. But, like, I just... I love his faces. Because his facial expressions are always, like, the actual fuck. Like, his face is a mo I feel this. I am looking at his face, and I'm like, yeah, it says everything. Like, 90% of the time, I feel like this. Like, are you just... What? Just with the... D it, it sums up so many emotions. Just... I identify with this Yang face, is all I'm saying. I don't usually care to see a man dining, but a woman who eats well is different. What do you say? How about leaving Redford and coming to me? I've already been with you, though. Been there, done that, literally. I can play with you until I get bored. And I'll probably end up dead. Honestly, I could only sense bad things from this. I shook my head and answered awkwardly. Thank you, but I'll have to decline. <laughs> You're wise. Even better. By the way, today's tea is... Longjing tea? Long... Jing tea? It's kind of bland, but it's good. Oh! Oh! And it's also good for your health! And I heard it's good for your skin! The two exclaimed as they started to pour enough tea for the table. So what do you want? Don't tell me you've come to have a meal. I wanted to ask you about the... whatever. <laughs> How convenient. I've just received a report on them. Yang gave a slight nod to a man standing next to him and continued to speak. There's an airport on the outskirts of the capital. I have no idea how to pronounce that capital or the out the city, the airport, whatever. So we're just going to skip it because I don't know how to pronounce Italian cities. So I'm going to butcher it. Anyway, that one was it. Huh. So you went there directly? That must have been a tough job, Lee. Lee. Can't pronounce his last name. Gil must know this man. Under the circumstances, we can't trust the information that whatever sends our way. God, why do they keep saying it? They say it so much more in this route than ever! The Lao Shu visiting directly seemed to be the only reliable way. What did you look for there? The other day, an old man named Wang died. 
He was a renowned craftsman known for exquisite pieces. My orders from Yang were regarding matters relating to Wang. Not about the whatever? <laughs> God damn it! Stop saying it! I can't pronounce it! Fuck. This game makes me feel like an idiot, because, like, 90% of the fucking words that come up, I'm like, look, I got nothing. Anyway. If the whatever is your aim, you'll only find dust. Lee would be murdered before that. You were told that Wang was returning home drunk when he fell off a cliff and died. Oh, we were, sorry. But the old man doesn't drink, so he must have been eliminated. He used to be on our side. On our side? So, were his crafts related to criminal activities? Yes. Yang affirmed my suspicions, then looked over to Lee, looked over at Lee as if telling, telling him to finish the story. Wow, I can't. As for the cause of death, the only information I could find was that it was an accident. And the masterpieces, or the masterpiece he was working on just before he died. Well, it's now po posthumous work. Posthumous work. Wow, can't fucking read. I heard that Wang had told an acquaintance what he was working on. Supposedly, once completed, it would turn the world upside down. This masterpiece was given the last of his life's energy, the first in a long time worth creating. The world would turn upside down. I investigated his place, but it was burned immediately after his death. Oh, yeah, like, he fell off a cliff when he was drunk and died, and then his house burned down. That doesn't sound... No, oh, totally weird coincidences. Come on. However, those living on the streets nearby said they'd taken some things out before the house burned down completely. Basically, looters at the scene of the fire. The masterpiece itself was already sold off, but... I was able to ask what it looked like inside the house. According to them, they saw many partially engraved bill plates all over the floor. I assume plates that were imperfect... So they wanted to get rid of them by burning the house down? Yeah, that's more than likely. Given the considerable amount, they must have decided that it would be faster to burn the evidence rather than carry it out. There seemed to be test bills scattered throughout as well. I couldn't obtain the actual item, but I can conclude there's a high chance that Wang created the counterfeit plates. That definitely would turn the world upside down if you had tons of counterfeit bills floating out there. It was a clue so close to the answer. I couldn't help but hold my breath. So they paid him. So, whatever ordered Wang to make the plates? I investigated with that in mind, but I have no proof of any connection between Wang and the whatever. <laughs> it's too late in the game to try to figure out how to pronounce it. Were they so clever in hiding it? Or did they simply have a middleman? Hardly any crime occurs in the country without the whatever's involvement. But it seems too convoluted to be contrived by the old men of the whatever. I'm certain they acted on someone else's idea. And that's the true culprit. Indeed. Not only counterfeiting American dollars, but distributing them in Berlin. Who would dream of something that requires so much effort? Yang's like, that just seems like a lot of fucking work. Again, Yang and I are on the same base. That's a lot of work. I have these grand ideas, but it involves a lot of work. And yeah, no. I kept my eyes on the cash flow and found records of the whatever periodically sending money to Europe. It's unclear who did it or why, but it's a considerable amount. So, are you saying that the whatever is paying the true culprit? Can we stop saying the whatever? Like... <laughs> That's right, and the deposit started right after Wang died. Takes money to make money. Yes, you need ink, a printing location, and labor. I can't list all the possible expenses, but everything takes a large sum of money to do. <laughs> I don't think it takes money to make money, but I don't think that phrase was invented for the idea of counterfeiting. Like... Takes money to make money, yeah, but only if you're counterfeiting, because literally you have to spend money to make fake money. That's what we're talking about. Like, that is like the literal interpretation, but it's like, not exactly. <laughs> it was just so funny in this sense. So then, basically, the true culprit had an artisan like Wang craft the plates, then murdered him to keep it quiet. 
and the true culprit obtained the plates and is getting the whatever to support the cost of printing the money. Is that what's happening? <laughs> what a clever girl. She's smarter than me because I, I was like, I don't know what's happening here. It's too much. There is too many fucking loops and I'm dizzy. Whoopsie. I hit the wrong button, but... But why would the whatever agree? Why can we stop saying that? Everything is set. No need to move your men. With some startup capital, one can earn money with the least amount of effort. And if it becomes too risky, you'd simply need to dispose of the little entrepreneur. No reason not to do it. For the whatever, this must have been a very convenient offer. Why? Oh. No risk, high return. There would have been no reason to refuse. God damn it, I always hit the wrong button when I'm trying to go to these things. Checkmate! Ooh. We're, oh, Marco and Roberto. Right. Sorry for asking so much of you. It's a great help. Well, Roberto can't talk without it being an attitude. After expressing my gratitude to my former co-worker, I hung up the phone. Should I report this to Marco? No. If I told him now when we made the wrong move, Marco could get fired. Oh, you care about him. That's nice. Besides, the situation wasn't something the local police could handle. I was at a total loss. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't think of a way to resolve this situation. Maybe that's why I remembered. Gilbert, those words. The words that made me affirm my sense of justice. No, I'm a detective. There's no need for me to rely on criminals. However, it was a fact that I was at a dead end no matter how I looked at it. Ooh... Now we're on to something. Gil smiled as if this whole ordeal was entertaining to him. By the time we got back to the Visconti Manor, it was already early evening. Say, Gil? Hmm? If you're going... Oh, you're going to the casino tonight, right? On the night of the new moon, come to the Twelve Seats. Let's explore your dreams. I know it's from Giuseppe, but I'm just going to pretend it's from Ardiretore. Yes, explore my dreams. Diretore. <laughs> Shouldn't be allowed to play these games. It'd be rude to decline the invitation. We'll see them on the night of the new moon. Next Friday. Today was that Friday. Tonight was the night of the new moon spoken of in the letter. Yeah, about that. I wasn't sure how to go about it. I was thinking about it for a while. Space, will you accompany me tonight? What? You want me to go to the casino with you? Yeah, but you gotta wear that sexy red dress. I mean... If you don't mind, yeah. I mean, I can't exactly charge in there with my men, you know? They already know my face, but I'd rather move without inviting suspicion. So I thought it would draw less attention this way. I understand. I'll go with you, Gil. Are you sure? Positive. You always look after me, Gil. I want to help you out, too. And I was born and raised in Berlone. I love this town. So, if there's anything I can do, then I want to do it. I'll do my best to not get in your way, so please, take me with you. He's like, damn, girl. <laughs> I was gonna ask you, why all of a sudden have the tables turned? Gil spoke in a serious tone and stared at me intently. I never thought you'd be so brave about this. Grazie. Gil's eyes narrowed. Eye! His eye narrowed. Set game. Jesus, game. As if he was looking at something bright. I smiled back and nodded. You can't narrow both eyes if you only have one. The sun had gone down completely. Gil and I went to visit the casino in Arca. Gil, please, don't stare at me so much. We're wearing that sexy dress, aren't we? <gasps> oh my god, I love this dress. I need this in my life. Oh my god, he looks fine as fuck in this. Jesus. Damn, they made him sexy. He looks exactly the same as he always does. It's just the sexy look in his eye. Impossible. Tonight you're shining brighter than ever. Can't take my eyes off you. Can't take my eye off you. I'm Gil, come on. Please stop. You're embarrassing me. Look at that dress. I love it. I fucking love it. It's gorgeous. 
I love the fashion in the 20s and the 30s and the 40s and the 50s. Like, Jesus. Okay? And, like, <sighs> we'd have way more fun 20s flappery kind of dress, just fancy dresses. But I got fat arms. I like fat arms. <laughs> this was my second time wearing a dress like this, so I thought he wouldn't say anything. When did you wear that dress before? Like, damn, that thing is beautiful. I love it. Instead, he was exaggerating even more than usual, and I didn't know what to do with myself. Stop. But why? I'm only speaking the truth. And besides, the dress looks incredible on you. It really does, actually. I mean, they drew it like that, but I mean, the dress is beautiful. Oh my god, look at the hair. Be <gasps> but like, it's cute because the hair thing goes underneath. Which is kind of weird because you would never see underneath like that, but like... And the jewelry... Ah! Everything about the 20s is fabulous. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Except for the fact... I like modern technology, but like, if we could bring some of like the 20s fashion flair back, it'd be amazing. Today's dress was different from last time. It was a long and chic black dress. One that Gil purchased for me specifically for tonight. I wore my hair in an updo to match the style and atmosphere. Uh, I thought this was the last time you dressed like this. Doesn't this style just suit you? Why are you trying to hide your body with your arms? Come on, let me see you. <laughs> because you're like, I like oogling you. Because you're oogling me and it's weird. But, but, Gil, um, I think it's better that we walk while looking straight ahead. I mean, if you keep staring at me, people will think you're odd. Huh? Well, what, wouldn't it be more odd to look away from such a magnificent beauty? <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> what a flirt he is. He's beautiful in that CG, though. We went on like that over and over until we reached the main hall. I mean, you're like, we're both going to walk into a pole because you're looking at me in this dress and I'm staring at your goddamn beautiful face right now. <laughs> it was my first time seeing the place in all its splendor. The lights were dazzling. Are you nervous? Y yes. The last time I was here, I didn't actually see the inside. Are you sure I don't look strange? You look fine. What's the matter? It's just, I have a feeling that everyone's staring at me because you look gorgeous. You're right. It's because you're so beautiful that they're mesmerized by you. Gil spoke such words seriously, and I had no words to say. The table written on the invitation is that way. Let's go, Signorina. The table mentioned on the invitation was a roulette table. There was already one man sitting there gambling. <laughs> I win again! Turning these chips into money is going to be some job! Oh, no dollars? Okay. I want Lyra! Man already had mountains of chips beside him. Without any hesitation, Gil walked over to the table and smiled at the man. You sure are lucky tonight. What a big win. You a tourist? Never seen you around here. Well, yeah. Are you a local? Yeah. A man to be able to win this much. You must be a hell of a lucky man, or... What you had inside that wallet was already hefty to begin with. Wonder which it is. <laughs> it's all luck. All luck. What do you say? Want a shot at it? With an invitation like that, how can I refuse? Sir, I'm sorry to inform you, but this is a private table. Gil gave a slightly cold smile and silently placed the crisp $10 bill on the table. The dealer gasped and stared at Gil. He finally seemed to realize who he was speaking to. Does he know? Like, I'm sorry, Mr. Gil, like from the Visconti. And then he sees that and he's like, but you got arrested for doing this and now you're here investigate. Looking guilty. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm a customer too. Is that a problem? N not at all. I apologize. The dealer took the bill from the table and gave him $10 worth of chips. Huh? The man seemed to have picked up on the change in atmosphere and looked confused. Gil kept smiling and resumed speaking to the man. Hey, since we're here and all, why don't we bet something besides chips? Besides chips? I mean, fate brought us together tonight, right? If I win, why don't you give me your business card? Well, uh, that's... You're obviously a lucky guy. Can't blame me for wanting to talk to you, right? Right, I see your point. Are you proposing we do business? I should hope you're not simply looking for investors. Well, something like that. The man glanced at the dealer, who gave a faint nod. V 
Very well then. I suppose my business card is nothing. Okay, so like this is a private table. This guy obviously had the $10 bill to sit here so he should know that... So like what's the deal happening with... And who the hell is Giuseppe? And why is he inviting everyone here? You know what I'm saying? Because Dire Torre... Well, we know his real name is Henry, but we also know that he goes by Sebastiano, right? So, like, he's not Giuseppe at all. So, like, but that was the name on the thing. Unless that we're, that was the name of the invitee. Oh, maybe that was the invitee name. Not the name on the... That, never mind. That makes more sense. I'm not very smart. Hold on. I don't know why I thought that was the name, like, of the person that was inviting you, but it could very well have been the name of the invitee. Like, here's your place card. Like, here's your name. You know what I mean? Duh. Okay. It's possible. I don't know who it's supposed to be, but that's an option, so there we go. If you win, it's yours, and I'll hear what you have to say. That sure is generous of you. <laughs> but are you a match for me tonight? To be honest... I'm a pretty lucky guy myself. Ah, oh, but just a moment. We haven't discussed the terms of my victory. What will you give me if I win? I honestly have no interest in you. One indeed. How about this? Those chips you earned tonight. I'll pay you five times what they're worth. F f what? Not enough? I, I suppose it'll do, but I haven't lost yet. I could win my own chips anyway, don't you think? And then what do you want? Tell me. Well, how do I put it? Oh my god, you were not betting me! Oh my god! Who would even ask? First of all, the fact that Gil's gonna agree to this. You gotta be pretty fucking self-assured of your victory, bitch! But also... What the fuck kind of asshole? That woman is with you, right? I wouldn't mind having her by my side. I am not fucking owned property, you son of a bitch! Technically sorta of owned by the church and the foul zones if you think about it, but like, fuck you! That's not actually how it really works! It's just, I, it's a weird situation that's like a one-off, okay? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> I hope her face is like, Huh? Don't tell me you expect to, me to gamble away a woman. Gil's like, <laughs> the look on Gil's face is everything. Like, what the fuck? You think I'm going to trade a woman? Are you insane? We don't do that shit here. That shit's wrong. Well, then suit yourself. We'll pretend this bet never happened. Gil's, Gil's bitterly furrowed. Gil bitterly furrowed his brow at the man's proposal. Yeah, because Gil's like, I'm not going to fucking barter off a woman that's fucking... What kind of... What? No. <laughs> so, thank you, Gil. I... I don't mind. I don't mind. What? Hold on a minute. No way. I can't let you get involved. But you're going to win, right, Gil? Gil, you're confident that you'll win. That's why you've made a bet with him, right? In that case, I'm gonna bet on you. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. I'll just fucking kill him in the alley if he touches me. Are you sure about this? <laughs> At least we're like, yeah, it's fine. Gamble me away. He's like, what? <laughs> okay. You knew this is the way it was gonna go as soon as he said, oh, I'll take that lady. You want me to bet a woman? I'm just so glad that Gil is like, the fuck? Dude, what is wrong with you? And we were like, nah, nah, it's cool. I got it. It's cool. You're gonna win. I, it's good. I'm just proud that he wasn't like, I mean, like, what do you think, Spacey? Like, he wasn't even entertaining the idea. Good. Good, Gil. I, props for that, because I would have lost a little bit of respect, like, I mean, you could be self-assured of yourself, but even being like, what do you think? That's a great idea, right? Excuse me? What? You shouldn't even entertain this until exactly the signature. Si situation and scenario were coming out together this situation slash scenario where i'm like nah, nah do it punk we got it like you know what i mean like uh, uh, so good on gil gil's eye surprisingly had a trace of doubt he only has one thank you you cannot pluralize that 
Are you going to do it or not? Hurry up! The dealer is waiting! Make up your mind! I'm losing this dude's voice, but whatever. I'll do it! Ho-ho! Well, that's exciting! I answered the man who was rushing us, and his grin deepened. Seems like the deal's on! Let's get started! When the man confirmed, the dealer rang the bell to close the table. I'll bet on black! Are you sure about that? I've made this much tonight. Now I'm playing for fun! I don't mind if you aim high. Then I'll go for red. Not after the money, anyway. Very well. Just as the man was about to twist the knob... However... Gil relentlessly twisted the dealer's arm up. No funny business. I'll spin the roulette. The man and the dealer had shocked expressions on their faces. Yeah. Because, like, you think you wonder if the dealer was, like, cheating for him. Ah, he thinks he's winning, and then it puts him in a better mood, and then, like, oh, our deal can go down. Like, but please, don't. Even if it's you, it's against casino rules. Panic dealer tried to stop Gil. Where's Dio de Torre jumping in? Ah! <laughs> You knew he had to show up at the casino, and I was just like, they're having a fight, and this seems a perfect time for- I was right, I love it. I'll let him do as he pleases. The masked man, the Direttore, suddenly made an appearance. What? But, Direttore! The dealer was clearly in distress, but the Direttore seemed to be having fun. Ugh. <gasps> Cannot wait for you, I love you, you goddamn masked glorious bastard! And this is all so entertaining. And just ask Lady Luck, oh, just as Lady Luck decides, truly befitting of our humble establishment. Grazie, direttore. Gil thanked the direttore with a mischievous smile. I is such a thing permitted? Really, what proof do I have that this man isn't a cheat? Glorious. God, Gil is so beautiful in the CGs. Okay, I feel like all the CGs are great in this game, but like... His neck looks a little awkward, but like, look at that expression on his face. Seems I haven't introduced myself. I'm Gilbert Redford. Redford? Don't tell me! The Viscontis! The very one. So you've heard. I'm that Redford. I'm the Mafia in this town. I never make gambling my business. I swear on my pride and my family name. I won't stoop as low as cheating. And the well-dressed man's like, But you will for counterfeiting? No. But you shut up. <laughs> I mean, I mean, because we're at a counterfeiter table. Like, there's obviously some shit kind of going down. This guy got an invitation with a fake tent with a... Does he know? You know what I mean? They're trying to make some kind of connections. There's something to do with the counterfeiting ring happening at this table. You know, and I think that's why Dio Tori's like, do it, because this is fun. Gilbert's not supposed to be here. He somehow got the invitation for somebody else, and <laughs> I feel like Dio Tori's got his, like, fingers in this pot, stirring this shit up a little bit, so. Anyway. The man was speechless, with his eyes wide. Without another glance at him, Gil turned to me and whispered, I'm spinning at space. Are you ready? Yes. Gil spun the roulette and threw in the ball. The ball clattered around as we watched. It eventually stopped. <gasps> Unable to bring myself to look, I couldn't help but shut my eyes tight. The result was... Red! Uh, seven red! Oh. I mean, it kind of had to be. because, Well, because if it was black and we went to hang out with the dude, we'd probably kick him in the nuts and be like, What do you know about the counterfeiters? <laughs> what, what's going on? I was supposed to win tonight's game. This is cheating. You have evidence of that? Just because you cheat doesn't mean everyone else does. I, no, no, I mean, you were cheating. I said I wouldn't. Are you doubting me? The boss of the Visconti? He's like, are you doubting the mafia? Shows his gun a little. You know, I got a fucking cannon at my house. I mean, I was seriously only joking about the cannon part, but he really did get one, so... The man couldn't respond, and his face twisted in anger. I sighed with relief. Thank you, Gil. Why are you thanking me? In fact, I should apologize to you. Gil smiled kindly at me and apologized. 
Then he reached out his hand to the man holding his head. Nez agreed. You're gonna tell me your name. The man seemed to have given up. He put a hand in his pocket and handed Gil a business card. Gil took the card, looked, o looked it over briefly, then handed it to me. I took the card and looked at it. The face of the card read Giuseppe... Modigliani? 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 Modigliani, yeah. Wait, that's the name on the thing! It was Giuseppe... Okay, so... We st okay, so the name was the invitee, which is this dude. Okay. All right, that made more... Look, it took me a long time to get there from seeing it. I was like, who's Giuseppe? Because wouldn't Dita Dorte be inviting him to this? Because... Okay. That was like the, this is your name. This card is you. Maybe that was supposed to be the front and then the back was the thing. And the game just showed you both. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. I figured it out when we got here. It was like days late, but whatever. I'm here on holiday. I'll have to ask that you refrain from unnecessary investigation. Of course. Apologies for disturbing you. All right, let's go home. Are you sure? Yeah, we had plenty of fun. He's the only person at this table and his name was on it. Huh. But how did he manage to get to the table if we had his envelope with his money? I'm very confused about this. Hmm. Did they not think about that? Like, we found his envelope. We have the $10 bill. We put it out. And so the dealer was like, oh, okay, you're clearly one of those people. Because it's a private thing. Well, I got money. They'd be like, it doesn't fucking matter how much money you have. You could, like, literally whip out a stack of gold. But unless, like, gold bars is, like, the secret key to getting onto this private table. You know what I mean? So this doesn't make any sense. And don't you think he should be suspicious? Because, okay. Private table. Just for Giuseppe. But he shows up. Oh, I'm Giuseppe. And the dealer's like, oh, okay. And then Gil shows up with a fake $10 bill and the dealer's like, oh, okay. Because if it was a private table, right, and you just walked up, hey, I just, you could whip out 50 fucking bucks and they'd be like, that's great. Private table, doesn't matter. Peace out. So it's almost like that fake 10 is like the symbol, the sign. Oh. But then you don't think Gil is like, so like, the dealer knows about the fake 10s, which would mean he would have been told, which means he has something to do with it, but he works for the casino and you don't think the casino's involved? I'm just saying, there's a lot of weird, suspicious shit going on here that I don't know what's happening. I mean, maybe it'll all come unraveled or maybe it's like, there's some weird loopholes and just holes in this plot that they're never going to fill and it's going to be like, so what the, okay. I, just to get to the end and they're like, nobody will figure it out. Nobody will think about it. I did. Or I'm just dumb and I'm not understanding half of what's happened. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. We had plenty of fun. Right then. Oh, dear Torre is sus. The fact that they just showed him with the dot, dot, dot. Looking a little perplexed. A little frowny. Mm. After we left the casino and walked a little while, Gil spoke with a serious expression. The person who dropped the invitation was probably that man from earlier. What do you think? I think you're right. He had so many chips piled next to him on the table, after all. Plus, it had his name on it. Unless there's other Giuseppes. Yeah, and the dealer was his accomplice. Business entertainment gambling, huh? But if you win that much money, wouldn't the direttore and the other staff notice? Okay, so at least we're on to that. Like, okay, so the dealer's in on it. But, again, the rest of the casino? I think so, too. No one said a thing. In other words, all this cheating is facilitated by the casino. The dealer saw the counterfeit dollar I gave him and offered me chips. All in all, I'd say there's no mistake that the casino's involved with this whole thing. Okay, because that's exactly the leap I got to. If the dealer took the counterfeit 10 and knew it was a sign, then the dealer's in on it totally. But again, wouldn't that look sus on the casino? And he's like, casino's involved, which is what I thought from the very beginning. It's the best place to launder money is a fucking casino. Just saying. They had one question. Gil, isn't this a state-organized casino? Could you do such a thing without the government not knowing? I don't know, but this incident may be tied to someone a lot bigger than we originally thought. Joseph Rosberg. I'm just saying, because okay. Dira Torre is our last route, so it makes sense why you don't go down Gil's route to the end, because it's starting to pull apart 
this like weird money laundering thing and the casinos involved in Dia de Torre has something to do with it, probably. And then you get to go down his route, which I think you're not supposed to make the assumption. I don't think you're supposed to figure it out. But like we knew from day one, like, okay, Dia de Torre is one of our boyfriendos because he's on the cover of the game. You can't put the Phantom of the Casino on the fucking cover of the game and make me go like, why can't we date? Oh, we have a secret. It's him. I'm sorry. It just is. Plus, then all of a sudden you see Henry and he stands exactly the same way and he looks exactly the same just without the mask and the wig. Like, though, I'm just saying. He's got the same, like, that little... It's basically like if they took Gil's sprite, but they put, like, a blonde curly wig on him, took the eye patch off, and put him in a pink dress. You'd be like, that looks exactly like Gil in a blonde curly wig and a pink dress with no eye patch. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? Like, the face shape, everything is just... We remove the hair, we remove the outfit, remove... And he's standing... This Dire Torre stands the same way as Henry, or vice versa, whatever. Like, it's obvious, okay? It's obvious. Plus, again, he's on the cover of the fucking game, so... Hello! Doesn't take a lot... Didn't It didn't take a lot of hoops for me to jump through to get to that, but... Th it makes sense why you don't... You have to do Gil's route last, even though Dante's poster boy and... I mean, I guess Gil a little bit is too... I guess they're both kind of postery boys, but... Dante's mostly poster boy. He's kind of like the canon route, but you do him first. But Gil's has way more of like this kind of plot line going on it, which would lead to Dio de Torre, and we probably won't find out exactly what's happening. Plus, okay, I say Joseph Redford has something to do with it. Joseph Rosberg. No. Did I say Redford? I can't. Okay. I cannot look at Gil and then say anybody else's name because I'm messing him up. I'm looking at him and it's like, Gil Redford, and we're talking Joseph Rosberg, Rosberg, right? Did I call him Redberg? I don't even know. Anyway, that guy. Right? Because we saw at the end of Dante's bad ending, Emilio talking to Dio de Torre. He called him Henry, but it was like, because it was at that, it was like, and Dio de Torre vanished. And you're like, oh, something's going to happen with this. And then Emilio's talking to someone and you're like, he's talking to Dio de Torre. And then he called him Henry and you're like, okay. And then you see... Henry Sprite. We don't know what his name is, but it's not hard to put it together. Anyway. But he's talking to him, so like Dia de Torre has some kind of connections to the church. So it's almost like in Dante's Bad Ending, Emilio's like, hmm, I know what you've been fucking doing. So it's not hard to make the assumption, I mean, it might be wrong, but that if they're like, well, something's going on in the casino, it's higher than the casino that Rosberg may have something to do with it. But then again, why it's interesting because he wanted to take over the town, right? And it could be possible that he just had a lot of his hands in a lot of pots. Okay, well, we're going to fuck up shit and I'm going to hand over the girl to the Lao Shu, and we're gonna fuck up the Falzone, and if we get rid of all of them, then I can take over the town and the Relic and everything like that, and then, how do we get rid of Gil? Oh, okay, well, let's just hope the Mafia kills each other. No, we'll set them up for counterfeiting. You know what I mean? Like, just to take everyone out in the town. And then, oh, but well, we won't give the girl to the Lao Shu, because, like, fuck them, they're the Lao Shu, we can get rid of them, ah, whatever, like, they, you think they're beneath you, you know what I mean? I mean... That's a lot of fucking pieces, but I'm just saying, you never know. This could all just be a plot by Dio de Torre totally on his own for some fucking reason. I don't know, but I feel like someone's puppet stringing him. He has some kind of ties to the church because Emilio knows who he is, so... But that could be, you don't find that part out until you're actually meeting him as Henry and you're going down his route. You know what I mean? So... It may not be, but somehow this and the counterfeiting and all of that ties into, I guarantee you, Henry's round. So, anyway. Gil glanced over at the casino, then returned his gaze to me. I don't know the relationship between the casino and the culprit, but regardless, it's too dangerous to hold future meetings at the casino. Information could be leaked. Gil thought about it more seriously and eventually spoke up again. But what to do? Where should we meet from now on? The church? Do you think it should be an Arca? Yeah, otherwise inviting others to your place would put you at an advantage. If they set up the round table at the Falzone Manor, I'd disagree. I'd tell them to come over to my place, and I'm sure Dante and Yang would feel the same. Despite their agreement, they weren't truly friends. 
Especially coming from Gil, who waltzed in other people's homes without concern. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I like how she pointed that out. He just fucking goes wherever the fuck he wants. Like, he made me more aware of the reality. Then, what about the church? Good us, I figured that out. <laughs> the church? The church is closed at night. You should be able to talk without any interruptions. Nah, it'd be inappropriate to talk about these bloody things in the church. Gil had a strong sense of faith and seemed to question the notion. I... God won't mind. I can't believe we're saying that. The church is home to people in need. I'm sure God understands that in different times, you can't help but depend on the church. And that's why I think it'll be okay. I was like, are you... Gil blinked his eyes in amazement and looked at me with a peaceful smile. I guess you have a point. Then... Yeah. Jeez, you're some woman, you know that? Maybe you have more guts than I do. Gil gave a hearty laugh and his shoulders shook. I'd appreciate it if we could use the church. Could you, could you negotiate with Sister Sophia for me? With the sister for me. Sorry, I thought it was... Gonna... Anyway, sure. Thinking I could help the town made me happy, despite the circumstances. I found my voice sounding giddy. But there was so much we didn't know. We were definitely moving forward. We're approaching the truth one step at a time. Even in the darkness, we still hadn't lost our light. That was how I felt. Oh, chapter five already? Whole card. I mean, I knew we had, that was our last choice, but I didn't know we were going to chapter five right away. This time of night, most of Arca was asleep. Only a few stragglers remained outside. We should be good now. I've locked the doors. With the doors closed behind me, I faced the five men who had gathered at the church. And so this is the house of God. How fascinating that I'd step foot in such a place at all. You were here the night you kidnapped me! You've called us here to the church of all places. What's going on? Explain yourself. Now, I was just about to. I've obviously called you here for a legitimate reason. After Gil finished telling them about the casino, everyone seemed to make sense of the situation. Dante's brow was furrowed as he considered this new information. On the other hand, Yang seemed to find the story amusing. He had a smile on his face. I looked into our friend from out of town. Turns out he's on the lower rung of the Ministry of Finance. There's also talk that he was once involved in the Currency Union. The Currency Union? Haven't they practically disbanded? Um, I'm sorry, but what's the Currency Union? Right, and the term would be largely unfamiliar to those living an ordinary life. Oh, I mean, unlike the rich motherfuckers that you are? Or do you mean because you're criminals? Is it because you're rich or criminal? Or rich criminals? So, I ain't. <laughs> Will you be explaining it in excruciating detail? How very generous of you. She's very much involved in this situation. Additionally, she offered to make the church available to us. She has the right to know what's going on. See, Dante thinks highly of me. Yang! Yang is such a mood, though. Th thank you, Dante. Dante's such a good boy. I love him so much. Why do I love him so much? Every time I see him... Like, I, you can't put half of the men in this game in front of me, but I'm being like, but I love you so much! Look, I love the Phantom of the Casino the most, but that's just because he's, like, so much fucking flair. He's, like, all the flair. Like, Dante's got a vest and a sexy suit and, like, the hat, and that's awesome. And Nicola's got a sexy hat and, like, you know, Gil's got a sexy suit. Like, they got the suits and the sexy suit. But then you got, like, a mask and the flair and he's just glorious. He's like, oh. Like, I just, I don't know. Like, I'm all about the fucking flair and Dire Torre is, like, the queen. Okay? I'm just saying. Anyway. Dante cleared his throat and continued. I'm gonna go over on this part because of this. The currency union was established to unify countries under a single monetary policy and to tie the value of currency across multiple countries with the aim of facilitating cross-border trade. It was formed some 60 years ago, but due to a number of reasons, it didn't work out. As I said earlier, in the aftermath of the Great War, it barely serves a function now. 
I believe the church participated in that as well. The church? That's news to me. Ah, see? An Orlok's like, church is guilty. I'm just saying. It was half a century ago. And the financial manager of the church had overproduced poor quality silver coins and as a result was kicked out of the union. Gil looked down at nowhere in particular. After a moment's thought, he spoke again. I reckon if the union moved now, the church would know nothing about it. And given that this, the currency union's being discussed, might we consider the possibility that multiple countries are involved? Perhaps even the military police that were so keen on arresting Redford. Are you saying it's not just one guy, but a whole organization? This is going to be a problem. The air grew heavy. There was little else we could talk about that wasn't speculation. Unable to come up with a plan to resolve the issue, the night's meeting ended there. Yeah, we still got a few minutes, so... You got a minute! After the others left the church, Gil stopped me. Seeing as we can't use the casino anymore, it'd be a great help if we could stay here. That is, if it's not too much trouble. Sure, leave it to me, Gil. I nodded, happy that there was something I could do to help. We already kind of had this conversation, didn't we? It's awkward. Oh! We went right into a Gil, but it didn't even go as like a side story. Weird. Anyway. Do, have we done this before? I feel like we have done it before, but it's just, it's so random that like I forget about it. It was midnight. After everyone left the lounge, I drank while gathering my thoughts. As the counterfeit money issue grew hazy, the image of Spacey emerged. The image of space emerged, sorry. When someone's in trouble, I can't just let them be. I invited her here to the manor to protect her. Naturally, I treat any lovely signorina well. I also felt that it was my duty to escort her around town, but... Can't stop remembering. How she let us borrow the church tonight. How she took interest in my guns. He's like, man, she liked my guns. <laughs> And even how she accepted being the object of my bet. We pushed that on you. You didn't... It, that makes it sound like, well, I decided, how, what do you feel about it? And she just so went along with it. It's more like, she just forced it on me. I wasn't going to do that. That's crazy. And she was like, bitch, go for it. <laughs> the ice glimmered as it melted into the amber liquid. Our activities together made it clear how strong-willed she was. She could read a situation and look beyond the moment. Yet... There's something that she's missing. Even though I was Mafia, she believed me readily. I could sense her opening up to me. If I were to put it into words... I just can't take my eyes off of her. It's been a while since I felt this way. She was a girl of the church. I promised that I'd protect her. Can't take advantage of the situation. As I muttered that, I felt myself smile. The feelings that were starting to form inside me seemed pretty fun to face head on. He's like, I think I'm falling in love with her. This'll be great. How cute. How fucking cute. Uh, we technically still have a few minutes, but I'm gonna stop here just because, who knows, this could be like another minute like that. It could be like 10, so we're a little under time, but anyway, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.